Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 11th of October 2020. And in this series we're asking the question, are we reaching peak gold? Now this is the second video in the series where today we delve into a definition of peak gold and we look at available deposits in the Earth's crust. So let's take a look. Now before we look at peak gold, we wish to remind listeners that yesterday we published our gold and silver weekly update for the week ending the 9th of October, where we upgraded our weekly trading brackets for both gold and silver, and we've placed a link to this in the description box below. Now, going back to peak gold. Last week in part one, we highlighted the issue of technology and whether gold could be extracted cost effectively together with some theories of how gold originated in the first place. There are scientists who differ on this very subject, and we, not being scientists ourselves, are not truly qualified to express a specific view one way or another. But needless to say, though, that most of science is reasonably clear on how much gold can be reached, even though they may differ as to how much gold actually exists, at least to a certain depth, within the Earth's crust. Now again we've placed a link to last week's video in the description box below. So let's kick off with what is a literal definition of peak gold as produced by Wikipedia. Quote, peak gold is the date at which the maximum rate of global gold extraction is reached. According to Hubbard peak theory, after the peak the rate of production declines until it approaches zero. Unlike petroleum, which is destroyed in use, gold can be reused and recycled. Unquote. Okay, now according to the World Gold Council, it estimates that all the gold ever mined totaled 190,040 metric tonnes in 2019. But other independent estimates vary by as much as 20%. But if we take this 190,000 tonnes figure and multiply it by the current price of gold, which is just over $61.5 million a tonne, we get a value of nearly $11.7 trillion. For interest, this compares with a global equity market valuation of $90 trillion, and compares with physical US currency availability, because gold is priced in US dollars, of $5 trillion, and if we use the broad money calculation, there's approximately $80 trillion of US currency in existence. But that's using the broad money calculation. So, how much gold is there in the Earth's crust? Well, once again, figures vary. And gold miners themselves are not always the best place to advise. They can certainly advise on how much their deposits and fines actually may have available, but not necessarily present a true global picture. And let's take a look why. There's an interesting site called westcoastplacer.com, and this is what they say. Part of this is a little technical, so forgive us, but we've tried to condense it as much as possible. Quote, how much gold is left in the ground? Nobody really knows. Mining companies of all sizes spend their exploration budget to map out potential deposits. They are a long ways from mapping the entire Earth. The peak gold estimates are based on proven and indicated reserves that are reported by public mining companies. There is no shortage of gold on Earth. The problem is that it is much deeper than we can mine. Current scientific theories estimate that there is enough gold in the core to cover the surface of the Earth with a four-metre-thick layer of pure gold. The density of the core is measured using several techniques, including seismic geophysics. Seismic waves are measured from earthquakes all over the world. The wave properties change as they pass through the liquid outer core 
and the super dense inner core. S waves cannot travel through liquid. That is how the outer core is mapped. Let's do a little maths. The average concentration of gold in Earth's crust is estimated to be between 0 0.0011 parts per million and 0 0.0031 parts per million. Now we can calculate the volume of the proportion of the crust which can potentially be mined. The deepest gold mine in the world is Tautona Mine in South Africa, which reaches 3.9 kilometres below ground. The Tautona Mine, operated by Angle Gold Ashanti, is a gold mine, so it's a good yardstick for how deep we can go. The volume of the Earth, approximated as a sphere, is 1,086,832,000,000 911,937 cubic kilometres. The calculated volume for the Earth, with 4 kilometres stripped off the top, is 1,084,788,800,000 213 cubic kilometers. Subtracting the two and using the average abundance of 0 0.0031 parts per million, we arrive at 6.3 billion cubic meters of gold in the top four kilometers of the crust. One more calculation. Gold has a known density of 19.3 tons per cubic metre, which gives us a total mass of 122,264,143,828 or 122 billion metric tonnes. That's a lot of gold. So look at 122 billion metric tonnes. Our calculated estimate of 122 billion metric tonnes of theoretical gold includes the entire surface of the Earth. Currently, we're not equipped to mine the oceans, although technology is advancing quickly. Let's adjust our estimate to account for only continental land, which can be mined with today's technology. So by subtracting the oceans, we are left with 35 billion tonnes of gold on dry land. Global production throughout the entirety of human history is 165,000 metric tons. Just a cautionary note, it's now gone up to 190,000 as mentioned earlier. So in a very theoretical sense, we have mined 0.00047% of the world's surface gold. That's very encouraging. Although not all of that gold is accumulated in mineable deposits. Typically, you need at least 0.5 parts per million to make a mine profitable. Depending on logistics, location, overburden and other factors that cut off grade can rise quite steeply. So all of that 35 billion tonnes is not really available to us. So we've estimated that within 4,000 metres of the surface of the Earth's crust there is 35 billion tonnes of gold with the remaining 87 billion under the ocean. Only a small portion of that is concentrated enough to mine. It's a big world out there and we've only properly explored small pockets of it. The super easy stuff is largely gone, but with advancements in technology and some ingenuity, it's there for the taking. For those explorers who are willing to put on their thinking cap and step outside of their comfort zone, there is a bonanza waiting for us. End quote. Okay. A lot of figures here, but assuming they're right, with an average 2,500 to 3,000 tonnes of gold being mined each year, with potentially 35 billion tonnes available, well, that's over 11 million years of mining. So something perhaps we should not be too worried about at this stage. However, to counteract this, the World Gold Council has stated previously that, quote, 
there are 54,000 tonnes of below-ground gold reserves waiting to be mined. These below-ground reserves account for less than 30% of what has already been mined and would suggest that at current mining levels there is less than 20 years of available supply. That latter sentence was ours, not the World Gold Council's, but that's the implication. Now next week we shall look at this discrepancy because there's a huge difference between 54,000 tonnes and 35 billion tonnes. Such a huge discrepancy, one has to ask who is closer to being accurate or are both accurate, but neither actually truly reflect how much gold can actually be mined with today's resources and technology. The other factor we have to also look at, which is why we mentioned it at the beginning is also the price. The higher the price of gold becomes, the more profitable, less profitable mines become, and the more seams that were traditionally regarded as unprofitable to mine suddenly become a different kettle of fish altogether. So next week we shall look at this discrepancy and give our view as to where at least potentially mineable gold lies. What do you think? Do share your thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Not forgetting to press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. And finally, we will be producing later today, probably this evening in GMT plus one time or very late afternoon in EST time, a discussion with Controversially Greg on the Richard and Greg channel. So do not forget to swap over to that channel. And again, if you haven't done so, kindly subscribe to that one too. That's providing, of course, you can bear listening to Greg and I for an average of half an hour. Until next time. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at illuminatisilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.